Hi, everybody. Welcome to part two of our Blessed series. Um, yesterday, we studied part one, which was the simple phrase, I am blessed. And we went through some really fun things in there, and we began our adventure of keeping track of our blessings. And so today, we're going to take it a little bit further. And in part two, the phrase that we're going to study is, I am spiritually blessed. Let's pray so we can get started right away. Father, thank you so much for this time that we get to share together. Lord, studying about your blessings is, is like we're sitting at a feast. Father, wake us up to all that you do and are in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so today we're going to spend a little bit more time in the New Testament, although we will be flipping back to some very uh, profound Old Testament um, readings that we may not have associated with what this means to be spiritually blessed. It may sound like we are just going to repeat yesterday's. You know, we covered blessed what it means, noun and verb, and we, we saw our part, our active role in this identity of being blessed. Um, but today, just adding that one word, that descriptive word that says that we are spiritually blessed, takes us to a totally different dimension. Um, up to this point, we have been studying God's blessings to us in this physical world that we live in. And that we, we found that could be emotional blessings, that could be circumstance blessings, that could be um, noun blessings of things. But today, we are talking about how he says that we are blessed in the spiritual realm. Now, it, it, it might seem a little odd, but we're going to take a journey and we're going to see what God says about this new concept of not only being blessed, but being spiritually blessed. And again, we're going to look for our part in this beautiful definition that God uses to describe us as being spiritually blessed. Okay, so we're going to jump around the scriptures. Um, we're going to start in the in the New Testament. We're going to go back and forth a couple times. But, you know, we only have a half an hour together. So sometimes we run out of time. But all of these verses will be listed in your extra work if you go to Jot and Tittle jot and tittle on Facebook, you will find the extra work. Okay, so let's get started. We are going to show up first of all in Ephesians. So it's a New Testament book. It's a letter written. And again, Paul is the writer of this. We're getting to know a lot about Paul and how he ministered to people and how he, he was tasked with this ginormous responsibility to make sure that the early church, the church, the early church refers to the first generations of people that came to know Jesus Christ after he died and rose again. That's what is referenced to the early church, the very first believers that the Messiah had come and fulfilled all of the Old Testament. So Paul, his task, what he was purposed for was to make sure that the early church had a, a strong understanding of their relationship and their responsibility in with God and Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. So it's profound. I don't know how he was able to do all that, but he did. And so we are going to sneak in Ephesians and we're going to see that he says something that actually is going to blow our minds today. So let's look. We're in Ephesians chapter 1. The very first chapter and we are going to look at verse 3. Now as we look at verse 3 I want you to take a minute and I want you to just look at how many times in this short little sentence that we see reference to bless, to blessings, to blessed, to blesses. Uh, you're gonna see a, a whole bunch of different phrases that equal this word blessed. All right Ephesians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Okay. That's a lot of words of blessing. So let's look at it and see if we can distinguish 
who is blessing, who is receiving, and, and what is, let's identify each one of these blessings to see how it relates to us, okay? So it first says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so first we see here, who is being blessed? God. Who is blessing? Us. So this first sentence shows us this relationship that is that is different. It it it's so big. You know, when we read yesterday's uh, some of the scriptures in Psalm, we saw that David was in this position where he was just giving God credit. He was just standing in awe of who God was, and it led him into this understanding that he was blessed in this realm. Today we see. That again, this understanding, this blessing God, this giving him our praise, giving him the credit that is due him, giving him our awe and our attention, um, giving him our favor and bestowing on him our love and our adoration. We see that once again, this relationship of being blessed by God has this peace, this element of standing in relationship with him of standing in this worshiping and this this amazing relationship of recognizing who God is. So Paul is sharing with them that you, me, we are blessing God. That's our active part in this verse so far. So we are bestowing all this goodness unto God. And then let's look at the second word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Okay, so now who is giving the blessing? God, the Father of Jesus Christ. Who is receiving this blessing? Us. So do you see this beautiful reciprocity? We're blessing God. God is blessing us. What an unbelievable relationship of, of intimacy. And the reason I say that is because it is hard to bless without having some understanding. You know, I can't give you a good gift if I don't know what it is that you need or want. So there's this level of intimacy in this kind of blessing with God. It is hard to bless God when we're not giving him what he wants or what he deserves. So this reciprocity of this love and admiration is, is now an up and down. It is a vertical relationship. As the blessings go up, the blessings can come down, and it is a different realm. It's a different realm we're talking about here. Now let's look at this last time it says blessing. It says that God is blessing us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Okay, now that's the part of the phrase that really piques my curiosity. In fact, that's what led me to break into a series because as I was studying just the concept, just the identity that he says we are blessed, I thought I had figured it all out with just seeing how he blesses us. But then I came across this reference in Ephesians and he says, he completely knowingly throws in this description that isn't like any of the other blessing uh, descriptions in the Bible. He says he is blessing us with every spiritual blessing that comes from where? What does it say here? This spiritual blessing does not come from things that are on this earth. The earth is not the resources for this. The earth doesn't provide the avenue in which this happens. All of this blessing happens in the spiritual realm. And I tell you, once, once I saw this, I was like, what? This is crazy. This is absolutely, undeniably crazy. So I began to look closely at what does this mean? That he blesses us with every spiritual blessing and the place that these blessings come from. I gotta let the dogs out, give me two seconds. Oh. 
I'm sure you heard that craziness. That is one of the downfalls of working at my desk in the living room is that, that uh, you get to hear all my lovely dogs. That was a herd going outside. I think they saw a bird or something. I don't know. So we're going to focus today on this concept of where these blessings are coming from. What are the resources that are being used to bless us? And according to this verse, he tells us these blessings are founded in and sourced by the heavenly realm. Now, at first I thought, okay, Paul, Paul likes to, to speak. He has, he's known for run-on sentences. He is known to be very wordy. And so at first I read this and I'm like, okay, is he trying to be extra descriptive or is he trying to tell us something? So all I did was take just a minute. That's all I did was take a minute and see if Paul had ever referenced this idea of a heavenly place. Um, was this something that he was teaching? Was it part of his teachings? And all I needed to do was turn a couple pages. So I want you to look with me really quick so that we can understand that Paul means what he says when he says that our blessings are coming from a heavenly place, a spiritual realm. So turn over really quickly to chapter 3 of Ephesians. And we are going to look at verse 10. Chapter 3, verse 10. In order that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Okay, that's the second. Actually, that's the third time. There's another mentioned in chapter 2. That's the third time now that Paul is using this phrase, heavenly places. So I don't think it's accidental or flowery, but let's, let's flip the page one more time. Flip it over to, to chapter 6. I want you to see this. Chapter 6, verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Okay. Once we determined, and you guys, that's how simple it can be sometimes to study the word, is just turn a page. Just look and see if that word is somewhere else. And it, it can lead to crazy, beautiful truths that we never would have probably saw on our own if we didn't actively look. Okay, so the, today's concept is built on this principle that Paul is giving to the, to the early church. He's trying to help them understand the bottom line truth of what it means to be a Christ follower. And in this portion, in this letter of Ephesians, he takes time to reference this place called heavenly places. Now, we have to observe that. And if you do some work on it, you will discover that Paul is referring to the spiritual realm where God lives. That's not taking anything away from the fact that we are on this earth and God is with us here and sends the Holy Spirit here on the earth. But it does stress the element that God has resources that we can't see. You know, we learned yesterday that David was calling God the Lord of hosts. David understood that God was the God of all the angel army. Well, this is, this is kind of a hint that goes further and says, not only does God have the resources on a completely different plane, but he blesses us spiritually from this plane. So the spirit world becomes part of our world in this word, spiritually blessed. Okay, is that making a little bit of sense? All right, let's flip over. Um, let's flip over to Ezekiel. Let's do that one next. Um, Ezekiel's in the, in the Old Testament and it's, 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 it's a good book. It's a confusing book because it's all about um, prophecy and, and, and Ezekiel was um, talking about the people who were in captivity. And so it's, it's a very deep book. But I picked out this verse because it was so beautiful in regard to what we're talking about here with spiritual blessing. So we're going to look in, in Ezekiel chapter 34 and we're going to look at verse 26. Now I am going to tell you that this is a very hard chapter to read. Um, 
this chapter, the, the whole first part of this chapter is, is reprimanding the shepherds or the pastors or the leaders that were taking care of the people of Israel. They had done a really terrible job. And so through, through Ezekiel's mouth, God is speaking directly. This is first person God. And he's, and he's really laying it on hard that they didn't take their role seriously of leading God's people into the truth of who God is and the truth of how God wants to relate with us. So that's kind of the con context of this chapter. So when we read this, this beautiful promise in verse 26, it comes from this crazy reprimand. And so this is a future promise that, you know, when, when we get corrected by God, and we make those corrections, we fix those things that he is correcting us, then he usually follows it up with a, a promise or a consequence or a result of us repenting and getting it right. So that's where we come with verse 26. God speaking. And I will make them, the Israelites, and the places around my hill a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season. They will be showers of blessing. Now, he's not talking about it raining. He's not saying that he is promising Israel that it's going to rain soon. There are many instances in the scripture where God actually uses rain R-A-I-N, what falls from the sky, the water that falls from the sky. He actually uses rain as an example of his authority. Sometimes in, in you will read in the Bible that he holds the rain so it becomes famine-ish. There's times where he has opened the rain, like in the flood with Noah. So God very clearly has used this idea of be, having the authority over weather, over the, the winds and the waves, over the rain and, and, and drought. But in this reference, in this promise, he is not talking about rain as showers. Showers in this reference is talking about a downpour from heaven. Holy cow. I look sometimes at rain. It just rained the other day here. And Aaron took me out in the car the next day. And there was a huge branch down. Um, just on just on the road, just a couple roads away from here, and it was a really big branch. And I'm like, wow, I didn't realize it rained that hard. So just being in awe of God being able to command the rain, the water that comes from the sky, is overwhelming. But to think that in this message, he is talking about a downpour that comes from this heavenly places. And he he says it, he, he couples it with the word bless. He says that he is going to downpour blessings. The heavens are going to open and, the, and we are going to experience as God's people, the Israelites. And remember, we've studied adoption and grafting that we too are also part of these promises that he promised Israel because we are now his people as well. So he says he is going to downpour blessings from the heavenly places to his people. Now, it was easy to look in the Bible and see the definition of physical kind of blessings. And this world, the blessings that he uses from this world, we learned about the emotions, we learned about things, we learned about circumstances. All those things are so easy to discover when we're talking about physical world blessings. But when we're talking about heaven world blessings, we're in a totally different dimension that we as humans, we can't, we have no access to those. We have, it is, it is this recognition that God has resources that we can't see, we can't understand, we can't tap into on our own. But in this definition of we are spiritually blessed, God is saying that he accesses these amazing spiritual realm blessings and he pours them 
from his sources in heaven. It, yesterday, I shared with you that scripture in Psalms about my personal definition that of, of what one of my physical blessings is. I showed you around my desk area. I didn't point out things. As we go, I'll point things out. But I shared with you in, in, in Psalms that beautiful verse that talks about when your quiver is full of children, when you have a house full of children, when you have children in your life, it is a physical blessing. I was able to share with you how intimate that blessing is. That to me is God's most beautiful physical blessing that he has given me. And he has given me so many on this earth. But today I wanna to share with you my most precious blessing that I can identify that he has given me from the spiritual realm. And it is joy. I don't know how to describe to you this blessing. It is not based on anything in this physical world. It is not based on emotion or happiness. It is not based on circumstances because if it was based on circumstances, then circumstances are pointing in the direct opposite of joy. He has blessed me. He has downpoured from the heavenly places, supernatural, spiritual joy that he allows me to experience regardless of the earthly things. It doesn't matter that I'm sick. The joy is undescribable. It's a spiritual blessing. It's my favorite spiritual blessing that I've received thus far outside of salvation. I want you to take this moment as you go and do some of the extra work, please take the time to sit down and say, God, help me see how you have blessed me spiritually. I'm going to give you another one of my absolute favorite spiritual blessings that he has bestowed, that he has downpoured from his heavenly places to me. And that is the understanding of the word of God. That can't come from man. When we open up the Bible and he speaks to us, that is not from earthly sources. Now, we can do a lot of earthly things. We can look at books. We can research. We can ans you know, ask and answer questions. But in all reality, understanding scriptures, them coming to life for us, is a spiritual blessing. The resources are coming from the heavenly places, not from anything on this earth. Are you seeing the distinction between what spiritual blessings are and what earthly blessings are? Because God gives both. And tomorrow, I, I, I know it seems crazy, but tomorrow we're going to learn about future blessings. So when we talk about this identity that we are blessed, it is so intentional by God. It is purposed by God. And the sources that are at his fingertips can only come from his realm. And it is unbelievable. Um, let's go. I could get caught up in this verse the whole time, but let's keep going. Um, let's turn really quickly to 1 Corinthians because I want you to see another connection with this. Um, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians... And we're going to look at chapter 10, verse 16. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this is because I need you to see what our very first blessing is spiritually that is available to each one of us. The very primary spiritual blessing that God provides for us from the heavenly realm is recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And of course, this is written by Paul again. So again, he wants us as believers to really have a sound, a sound foundation in who we are. And so it says, Is not the cup of blessing which we bless a sharing in the blood of Christ? Okay. This is such... When we get to this chapter to study and we do some more IMs from, from 1 Corinthians, we're going to cover some of these extra things in this chapter. But for right now, I want you to see that this blessing that he is talking about, this cup of blessing that we get to share, comes from... Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. 
which we know, which we know there was no human realm that can be credited with his mighty resurrection. So the very first spiritual blessing that we get to receive from the heavenly places where our God resides is salvation through the blood of Jesus Christ. And Paul says something in here, and we're, we're going we're gonna to kind of jump off this word that, that Paul uses. He uses the word share. So all of a sudden, this blessing comes from individual stuff. You know, I am blessed. You are blessed. I am spiritually blessed. You are spiritually blessed. But now he uses this phrase that we share in some of these spiritual blessings. Okay, we learned yesterday that the blessing relationship is very intimate. Um, because it's about knowing each other. We know God, so we know how to bless him. He knows us and he knows how to bless us. But in today's, in this spiritual blessing, there's this element of sharing in the blessing. Now, we're going to read a couple things and they're a little bit um, confusing. But when we put it in context with this idea of spiritual blessing, it begins to show and it begins to to illuminate and we get to, we get to see some things. So we're going to jump to the Old Testament and we're going to jump to a book that we have not used as a resource yet. My goal is that in this time that we get to share in learning who we are in God that we will reference every single book in the Bible. And so today is a new book that we are getting our resources from and it's the book of Ruth. And it's all the way back in the Old Testament, it's very beginning in the Old Testament, although that's not where it is chronologically, okay? Um, we are going to look at Ruth chapter 2, verse 4, okay? Let's read it together. And they took for themselves Moabite women. Oh, did I skip to the wrong one? Oh, I, sorry, I was reading in chapter 1. It's chapter 2, verse 4. Now behold... Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, May the Lord be with you. And they said to him, May the Lord bless you. Now, this may seem like a frivolous verse, and it might be like, Jack, what are you talking about? Well, let me put a little context of where this verse is coming from. It's coming from a book that is all about one woman who has her trust in God. And it's a ridiculous trust. She wasn't raised to understand a relationship with God. She found it and she held on to it with everything she had. And so the whole book is how God amazingly intervenes in one woman's life and how he blesses her in the good and blesses her in the bad times that he is with her. But this particular verse is being spoken by who God is going to allow to be her husband. And now what is so cool about this is, you know, the scripture gives us this, this tiny little information about who her husband is going to be. His name is Boaz, and he's going to be David, David's grandfather. So this, this little man, this character in here that, that is being used by God to create his, his uh, line of ancestry to Jesus, we get these little tidbits of information about him. And this is a man who owned a lot of property. He was a very wise and successful businessman. And part of the reason he was, according to the description provided in the book of Ruth, one of the ways that he was so such a good businessman is he really cared about the people that worked for him. And he had the community in mind. He just really was good to his workers and to the community. And in this verse, we see one of the characteristics of Boaz. And it says here that Boaz was saying to his reapers, now that's not the grim reaper as in death. These are, these are harvesters. These are people who work in his field. These are laborers. These are people, uh, you know, how you sow a field and then you reap a field. These are those people. These are just nobodies. They're nobodies. And he goes up to them and says, may God bless you. May God downpour from his beautiful heavenly place. And that's how he spoke to the people around him. 
You see, that's what Paul was trying to help us understand in 1 Corinthians, is we share in this supernatural blessing called salvation. And we have been spared by Jesus Christ equally, all of us. And so Boaz in this statement is sharing his knowledge of how God blesses and he's sharing it with the nobodies. Now there's other references that he sits at the gate and he talks to the important people. I mean, he's he's got pull in the community. But in this reference, he's helping us understand this concept of sharing the spiritual blessings that God provides. And we do that by being a vehicle that God uses to pour out his spiritual blessings onto others. Now, we are out of time, but we're not out of information. This same concept is repeated in Psalms 129. In Psalms 129, uh, verse 8, it's, it's in your extra work, you will see again that a person is being used as a vehicle to share, to, to acknowledge, and, and, and to bless, to be the vehicle of God's spiritual blessings onto another person. It, it, there, you're going to read a, a scripture from, from Romans, excuse me, for, yeah, from Romans, Romans chapter 15. You're going to see that there is this beautiful scripture where God is given credit for blessing the people that Paul is going to go to, that God is, is already downpouring his spiritual blessings so that they will be ready to hear the gospel. So anytime, it, God is not just blessing our lives individually with supernatural spiritual blessing, but he takes it a step further in our responsibility in this beautiful blessing relationship with the spiritual blessings is to share this cup of blessing. And this cup of blessing is Jesus. Jesus. So when we share, when we bless another person with God's blessing, we are saying that we are asking God to tap into the very resources of the heavenly places and downpour those on the person to which we bless. My favorite, favorite, favorite thing to do as a, as a, as a woman, as a, as a mom, as a pastor, is to say a blessing over a baby that's just been born. To share that cup of blessing from heaven. And I love to speak over a child, asking God to open the heavenly places and downpour all of his good spiritual blessings. It is beautiful to experience being blessed spiritually, but it is also beautiful to understand and to become active in blessing others in the spiritual realm. This is not giving gifts. This isn't money. This is saying, may the God of heavenly places pour out his blessing on you. Okay, I'm excited for part three. I'll see you tomorrow. Hmm?